Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Check out what I've got today. This is the GEP RC Mark IV 7 inch long range FPV drone. It's a pre built, pre tuned, ready to fly drone from GEP RC that starts at just 240 bucks. There's also an 8 inch version that starts at $260 and a 10 inch version that starts at $300. Now those prices are for the plug and play version. You have to add a few dollars for your receiver and also your GPS if you want to add one. But if you use code FPV5, you can get 5% off, which means this Mark IV 7 inch drone right here would start at just 228 bucks. It's a lot of drone for not a lot of money. Full disclosure, that's my coupon code, so I do get a commission if you use it, but GEPRC did not send me this drone. They are not sponsoring this video. I actually decided to pick up this drone myself because I wanted to put together a budget-friendly and extremely capable long-range or medium-range mountain cruiser. This is an analog drone and it comes with a 1.6 watt VTX. The 8 inch and 10 inch versions have other VTX options, so you want to check those out on GEPRC's website. But something that's very interesting about this drone that really sold me on it was that the stack that GEPRC uses is HD ready. What I mean by that is it has a DJI plug and it also has an extremely capable BEC. So your power hungry digital VTXs will just drop right in. That means that you could pick up this analog drone, drop it a digital VTX, and you would end up with an extremely capable long inch drone at a price point that's way less than most seven inch digital bind and flies. So the price point is good, but it's an analog drone in a digital world. So who is this drone for? I see three use cases for this drone. First, you analog guys, you can get some amazing range out of this 1.6 watt VTX. Second, FPV pilots that are just getting into long range, you might want to get your feet wet something like this without spending a ton of money. And third, there's hobbyists like me that are going to take this Mark IV long range platform, add a GPS, add a crossfire receiver, add a digital VTX, and end up with something extremely capable at a very good price point. Let's take a closer look at this and I'm going to show you guys what you get and what you give up with this budget friendly Mark IV long range drone. All right, you guys, here's what the LR7 looks like when it comes to you. Let's see what we get in the box. We do get two sets of props, which is pretty nice to see in a bind and fly at this price point. These are gem fan three bladed seven inch props with a 3.7 pitch. We have an accessories bag that gets you two battery straps, some foam landing feet, a rubberized battery pad for your frame, some antenna tubes, a GEPRC branded Momota 5.8 gigahertz RHCP antenna, and some super basic hardware and tools. You get a bag with your documentation. What I love about GEP RC Bind and Flies is how they ship them all sealed in plastic. You feel like you're getting something that's truly factory fresh and just for you. All right, you guys, after tearing the plastic off, my first impression of this drone is that it's a typical GEP RC Bind and Fly. And what I mean by that is the quality of the build and the components is really very, very high. The soldering work is very good, as I would expect it to be from GEP RC. There's no markings on these motors, but from the spec sheet, we can see that they're 2806.5, 1350 kV motors. This is a 6S quad. The stack uses the GEP RC Taker F405 version 2 flight controller with a 50 amp ESC. It does have a 9 volt 2.5 amp BEC and a DJI air unit plug. And what that means is that you could pick up this analog bind and fly and very easily remove that analog VTX, install your own digital VTX, whether it be a DJI O3 air unit, an original air unit, a walk snail, an HD0, whatever you want, and it's literally just plug and play. We do have a pretty big capacitor installed back here. It looks like that's a 680 microfarad, 35 volt capacitor. The FPV camera is the Caddx H1. 
I don't know anything about that camera. I suspect that it's an unbranded or rebranded Cadex Rattel because it looks exactly the same. A few things that I did notice that GEPRC omitted in order to keep that price down is there's no GoPro mount. There's also no TPU landing feet like you'd usually see on a quad like this or TPU bumpers up here. Also, there's no option to order this quad from GEPRC with a GPS. That's a big disappointment for me because this is a long range quad. And for me, long range means GPS. All right, you guys, now I've got my Mark IV set up the way I want to fly it. Now, usually I try to test a product the way the manufacturer ships it because that's what you're going to receive. But in this case, I made an exception because this Mark IV does not come with a GPS. And that wasn't okay with me. For me, a long range quad has to have a GPS unit. So I did print up this rear mount right here in order to install my GPS. This is the TPU print that comes with the quad. And while I was at it, I also moved my Crossfire antenna up front, which is the way I like to have it on a long range quad. And I also added a GoPro mount. Since this is an analog quad, I will be doing my test flights with the analog VTX that comes with the quad. But for the record, I bought this quad with the intention of going digital. The camera mount up front is designed for 19 millimeter cameras. It's kind of an old school design, but it's very effective. These two carbon plates hold the 19 millimeter camera and it's pretty well protected. So if you wanna upgrade your VTX, keep in mind that a 19 millimeter camera will drop right in there with this camera mount. What that means is something like one of the older DJI systems like this polar camera or a system with a Nebula Pro and I believe the walk snail systems use 19 millimeter cameras, those systems should just drop right in. And if you're a walk snail flyer, you know that there's not a lot of walk snail bind and flies out there. So you should be able to pick up this quad right here at a pretty good price, drop a walk snail system into it, and hey, you got a walk snail bind and fly, you know, in air quotes, because you have to add your own VTX. Now, if you want to use a larger camera, something like the original DJI camera or the DJI 03, you're going to have to chase down a 3D print. The good news is that this frame has been out so long that there's loads of 3D prints available. I have seen prints for the original DJI camera, but I don't know of any soft mounting solutions for the DJI 03. If you plan to install anything other than a 19 millimeter camera, do your research first just to make sure it'll fit. One of the great things about a bare bones or eco style drone like this is that it's extremely lightweight because GEPRC left off all the extras you don't really need like TPU landing feet and side plates. GEPRC lists the plug and play version of this drone as weighing in at 455 grams. Now my drone with the extras that I added like the GoPro mount, like the GPS, and my rear mount here comes in at 491.7 grams. And if I add my battery straps with two battery straps ready to fly, it comes in at 503 grams. To put that in perspective, my Mose 7, which you guys have seen on, on the channel before, this is a beast of a quad. GEPRC lists the plug and play analog version of the Mose 7, which runs the same VTX as the Mark IV, as weighing 675 grams, which is 220 grams heavier. Now, my version of the Mose 7, which I built myself, so it has different motors, it's running a DJI 03, it comes in at 721 grams, so about 220 grams heavier than my Mark IV. What that means is that the Mark IV is a great choice for a long range cruiser, not just to save money, but it's a nice lightweight minimalist package, which is just what you want for long range flying. The stack on this drone is GEPRC's F405 HD version two stack with 50 amp ESCs. Even though this is a budget stack, it's a pretty good option because it does have that F405 processor so you don't have to worry about compatibility issues. It's also got plugs everywhere, including a DJI plug. So if you pick up a digital system with a 19 millimeter camera, it's literally just plug and play. It does have six UARTs, so I had no problem installing my GPS unit. 
It also has USB-C. That's nice to see on a budget stack. And it has 16 megabytes of black box storage. The VTX is GEPRC's rad 5.8 gigahertz, 1.6 watt VTX. Keep in mind that the eight inch and 10 inch versions of this quad offer 2.5 watt, 5.8 gigahertz VTX, and they also have 1.2 gigahertz options. So long range analog pilots are gonna wanna check out those options on GEPRC's webpage. I went with the 5.8 gigahertz, 1.6 watt VTX because it's very capable, but I plan to upgrade it anyway. The VTX is already set up in beta flight to output the full 1.6 watts, and the quad is already set up with smart audio on UART1. If you can't use smart audio for some reason, for example, if you want to take out this VTX and throw it into a, an, an aircraft that doesn't have a flight controller, there's also a button right here where you can set the power, channel, or frequency. Now when it comes to batteries, I've flown both LiPos and lithium-ion packs on this quad with these 1800 milliamp and 2200 milliamp 6S packs. I can get six to nine minutes with a little bit of throttle discipline. If you want to fly this quad aggressively, you'll get significantly less flight time. But where this quad really shines is with lithium ion packs. These are the NAV batteries from Lumineer. I've got a video on these batteries on my channel if you wanna learn more about these batteries specifically or the difference between lithium ion and lipos, feel free to check that out. I buy my packs in pairs and I run these two packs in parallel to give me the equivalent of a single 2P 6000 milliamp pack. And with that, I get 20 minutes of flight time. Now keep in mind, I don't overcharge my packs and I don't run them down too low because these batteries are expensive and I like to take care of them. Also, these packs use 18650 cells. You can get larger packs that use 21700 cells, which will give you an 8000 uh, milliamp equivalent pack and that should get you 25 minutes or even beyond that if you like to push your batteries. It can be a real issue to mount these huge batteries on this frame because this frame right here was originally designed as a 5 inch frame. This is one of the original 5 inch analog Mark Force freestyle drones where there really wasn't a need to put massive batteries on here. To put it in perspective, I've only got about four and a half inches of usable space between my GoPro mount and my battery lead, where the Mose 7 or a Chimera 7 have more like six inches of usable battery mounting space, even with a GoPro mount. How I like to run two packs on some other, other quads with more space is I might run them like this, but then I'd have to remove my GoPro mount and I don't want to do that. For me, running a GoPro is one of the whole reasons I bought this quad. So on my Mo 7, I would run these packs like this in parallel, but I don't have the option because there's like millimeters of clearance and I'm just not comfortable with that clearance at all. So I solved this problem by printing up this battery mount. I did not design this mount. All credit goes to XM2 store. They designed this mount to run two batteries in parallel on the Chimera 7, but it works great for this quad. I stuck a battery mount on there to give it, make it a little bit more grippy, and I can run two packs in parallel like this. By using this battery mount, I lift them up a little bit to give me more clearance with the props, makes me feel a little bit better, and it allows me to slide it backwards or forwards to balance center of gravity according to whether or not I have a GoPro on there, and it works out pretty well. It is a little finicky to deal with this parallel cable, but that's a price that I'm willing to pay in order to reuse these packs on my five inch and six inch quads. If you have massive packs, or if you just don't like this setup, you could run those packs on the top plate just by getting rid of the GoPro mount, or you could also mount them underneath on the bottom plate. For my test flights, I did fly the stock 1.6 watt VTX with the stock antenna, and I was using my trusty SkyZone O3 goggles with these Lumineer antennas. Now, this is mid-range analog gear from like four or five years ago, and I easily flew out two and a half kilometers on my maiden flight without losing signal. Now, I know you long-range guys out there are laughing at that going, ha ha, two and a half kilometers. I pissed two and a half kilometers. 
Yes, yes, I know, two and a half kilometers isn't really like crazy long range, but my intention is not to break any range records here. I just wanted to show you guys what you can expect when you open up the box here and are using just some very average analog gear. There are much better analog goggle modules and there's much better antennas on the market so you can get significantly further range if you are really interested in flying long range. Just make sure you're using some lithium ion batteries like this to really fly this drone as it was intended. The Mark IV flies very well with the stock tune. It does feel a little bit floaty unless you've got a GoPro or some heavy batteries on there. So I think Gep RC tuned this quad, assuming you're gonna be carrying some sort of relatively heavy payload. I don't plan to fly this quad aggressively. That's what my five inch drones are for, but it definitely will rip with some good lipos if that's what you want. With lithium ion batteries, it's a great medium to long range mountain cruiser. And that's what I bought mine for. It'll go further than I ever need it to. And it's perfect for getting cinematic um, FPV scenery shots with a GoPro while still getting some nice long flight times. All right, you guys, here's what I like and don't like about this quad. There's a few points where I can really tell that Gep RC saved money. There's no buzzer, there's no TPU feet, there's no GoPro mount, there's no side plates, and no GPS. I can live without all of those extras because I really like the idea of a minimalist build for a lightweight, long-range cruiser. But the lack of a GPS option is a huge oversight for me. I understand that they didn't want to include GPS uh, with the price point they were trying to hit, but they really should have included GPS as an option that you pay extra for. I have heard some people say that you can just add this GPS unit to your order, and then when you check out, leave GepRC a note in the order notes saying, please install GPS unit, and they'll do that for you. I've never done that, but apparently it's a thing. Another thing I noticed is that they don't include the cables for this flight controller, even though it's covered in plugs. This isn't such a big deal because there are solder pads on the underside of the flight controller that you can solder to, and I actually prefer to solder my GPS directly to the flight controller rather than relying on a plug, but they really should have included those cables so that you have the option of using the flight controller the way it was designed to be used with all those plugs. Something else I noticed is that I paid extra for the Crossfire version, but it came with a Gep RC branded 915 millihertz antenna, not a TBS Immortal T. I can live with that and it seems fine, but it's another point where they saved a buck by not including the name brand TBS Immortal T. All right, you guys, now that I got my complaints out of the way, let me tell you what I love about this quad. First of all, the minimalist lightweight design is the perfect platform for long range FPV. If you're an analog flyer with the right antennas, the sky is your limit. I'll be putting a DJI system in mine, but if you're a Waxdale flyer, this might be the perfect platform for installing a Waxdale system with that 19 millimeter camera mount. But by far what I like the most about this quad is that I'm getting a high quality, pre-built Gep RC long range drone at a super low price point. If you're considering one of these Mark IV long range drones, are you gonna fly it analog? Or are you gonna upgrade to a digital system? Let me know your suggestions or feedback in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you guys. All right, that'll do it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.